Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is a platform game developed and published by Sega. It is the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 1992 and was released worldwide for the Sega Genesis in 1994. Following the events of Sonic 2, Dr. Robotnik's spaceship, the Death Egg, crash lands on a mysterious floating island. There, Sonic and Tails must once more retrieve the Chaos Emeralds to stop Death Egg from relaunching, while making rounds with the island's guardian, Knuckles the Echidna. Gameplay is similar to previous entries, with players controlling Sonic and Tails through side-scrolling levels at high speeds while collecting rings and defeating enemies. Development began shortly after the release of Sonic 2 in late 1992. It was developed simultaneously with Sonic and Knuckles, they were developed as a single game until time constraints and cartridge costs forced the developers to split them in two projects. The Sonic and Knuckles cartridge features lock-on technology that allows it to be physically attached to the Sonic 3 cartridge, creating a combined game, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Pop musician Michael Jackson reportedly composed portions of the soundtrack, but left the project and went uncredited. As with its predecessors, Sonic 3 was a critical and commercial success, with critics seeing it as an improvement over previous installments. It sold over 1 million copies in the United States, though this makes it one of the best-selling Genesis games. Its predecessors, bundled with the Genesis in some regions, had sold a combined 21 million. The game has been re-released in compilations and download releases for various platforms, including Sonic Mega Collection for the GameCube and Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Topic. Gameplay Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is a 2D side-scrolling platformer. At the start, players can select Sonic, Tails, or both. In the latter choice, players control Sonic while Tails runs along beside him, a second player can join at any time and control Tails separately. Sonic 3 adds the ability for Tails to fly for a short time by spinning his twin tails like helicopter rotor, when he tires, he falls. Unlike Sonic, Tails can also swim underwater, the game takes place over six zones, each divided into two acts. Levels are populated with Robotniks robots, called Badniks. Sonic and Tails can defeat Badniks by jumping on them or using the Spin Dash attack, which also gives the character a speed boost. The levels include obstacles and other features such as vertical loops, corkscrews, breakable walls, spikes, water that the player can drown in, and bottomless pits. There is a mini-boss fight with one of Robotnik's large, powerful robots at the end of the first act of each level and a full boss fight with Robotnik at the end of the second. Reaching a new level saves the game to one of six save slots, as with previous Sonic games, Sonic 3 uses rings, scattered throughout the levels, as a health system, when the player is attacked without rings, is crushed, falls off screen, drowns, or exceeds the act's 10-minute limit, they lose a life and return to the most recently passed checkpoint. Dying with zero lives gives the player a game over. The levels also include power-ups in television monitors that, when hit, grant the character an extra life, temporary invincibility to most hazards, a number of rings, a shield that allows them to breathe underwater, a shield that allows them to withstand fire from enemy projectiles, or a shield that attracts nearby rings. The game contains two types of special stages. When the player collects at least 50 rings and passes a checkpoint, they can warp to the first type, which involves bouncing up a gumball machine-like corridor to earn power-ups by hitting a switch. Both sides of the corridor are lined with flippers, which disappear when the character bounces on them, and the switch drops when both flippers supporting it are removed. The corridor's floor contains a bounce pad, which also disappears after one use. Falling afterwards causes the player to leave the stage with the most recent power up collected. The second type, triggered by entering giant rings found in secret passages, involves running around a 3D map and passing through all of a number of blue spheres arranged in patterns. Passing through a blue sphere turns it red, and touching a red sphere causes the player to leave the stage, unless the player has just completed a cycle around an arrangement of blue spheres, in which case all of these spheres turn to harmless rings. 
Removing all of the blue spheres gives the player a Chaos Emerald. If Sonic Not Tails collects all seven, he can become supersonic at will, which makes him invincible to most obstacles. Failing to collect the seven Chaos Emeralds triggers a post-credits scene in which Robotnik and Knuckles taunt the player. Sonic 3 includes a competitive mode. Two players, controlling Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles the Echidna, race through one or all of five stages that do not appear in the main game. In these same stages, a single player can compete against the clock in time attacks. Topic Sonic 3 and Knuckles Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were intended to be a single game, but were released separately due to time and financial constraints. The Sonic and Knuckles cartridge features a lock-on adapter that allows other Genesis cartridges to be physically attached to it. Connecting the Sonic 3 cartridge creates a combined game, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The lock-on function is available in some digital releases of the games, such as the Virtual Console service for the Wii. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles allows the player to play Sonic 3 levels as Knuckles or Sonic and Knuckles levels as Tails or both Sonic and Tails. Other new features are the ability to collect Super Emeralds, unlocking new Hyper forms for Sonic and Knuckles and a Super form for Tails, improved save options, access to new areas that Sonic or Tails could not previously access, altered boss forms, and an additional ending that shows Sonic returning the Master Emerald to Angel Island. Topic plot After Sonic and Tails defeat Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Robotnik's space station, the Death Egg, Crash lands on the floating Angel Island. There, Robotnik meets Knuckles the Echidna, the last member of an ancient Echidna civilization that once inhabited the island. Knuckles is the guardian of the Master Emerald, which grants the island its levitation powers. Robotnik dupes Knuckles into believing Sonic is trying to steal the Master Emerald, turning the two against each other while he repairs the Death Egg. Sonic and Tails approach Angel Island in their biplane, the Tornado. Sonic uses the Chaos Emeralds to transform into Super Sonic, but Knuckles ambushes him and steals the Emeralds. Sonic and Tails travel the island hindered by Knuckles and Robotnik. At the launch base, where the Death Egg is under repair, Sonic and Tails fight Knuckles, but the Death Egg relaunches. On a platform attached to the Death Egg, they defeat Robotnik, causing the Death Egg to crash land on Angel Island again. The story resumes in Sonic and Knuckles. Topic development After the completion of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sega Technical Institute STI split into two teams, one comprised Japanese developers, and the other Americans. The American side worked on Sonic Spinball, while the Japanese side developed Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Yuji Naka and Hirokazu Yasuhara were the primary creators of the Sonic 3 design document and project schedule. Naka handpicked the majority of the team, while STI director Roger Hector oversaw development. The original prototype for Sonic 3 was an isometric game rather than a side-scroller. The concept was abandoned early as the team did not want to change the formula too radically for a sequel. It was eventually used for Sonic 3D Blast in 1996. According to Naka, the team felt that they needed a deeper story to expand the world of Sonic, which made the project huge. Thus, the levels are triple the size of those in Sonic 2. Many elements were conceived during the development of Sonic 2 but deferred to Sonic 3. Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles were originally planned as a single game. However, time was limited and the manufacturing costs of a 34 megabit cartridge with NVRAM would have been prohibitively expensive. When the team realized the game was getting too large, they split it in half, allowing more time to develop the second part and splitting the cost between two cartridges. The cartridge has a small amount of non-volatile RAM built into it, which allows the player to save game progress to the game cartridge. Sonic 3 features the debut of Sonic's rival, Knuckles the Echidna. Numerous designs for the character were submitted, the chosen design was submitted by Takashi Yuda, Yuda envisioned him as a supporting character for Sonic, and felt he would make a good playable character. Whereas Sonic symbolizes speed, Knuckles symbolizes power, and the emphasis of the character was to break walls. His shoe coloration was inspired by Jamaica's flag. The original name for the character was Dreads, referring to his dreadlocks, Hector said Sonic 3 had a troubled development. 
He recalled having to prevent the rest of Sega from bothering the team while simultaneously making sure the game would be finished in time. Additionally, Hector struggled to balance resources between Sonic 3 and other projects. Naka was sometimes seen as a harsh leader, and STI staff not on the Sonic 3 team became jealous of the high priority given to the game. Topic Michael Jackson's involvement in 2005, Hector stated that Sega hired American pop musician Michael Jackson, a fan of the series, to compose music for Sonic 3. According to Hector, Jackson's involvement was terminated following the first allegations of sexual abuse against him. He also said Jackson's music was implemented in the game at the time and had to be quickly reworked by Howard Drossen. The website of musician Chiraco Jones, who contributed music to Sonic 3 and is credited as Chiraco, credits himself along with Jackson and Jackson collaborator Brad Buxer for musical cues for Levels 2 and 3 of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic co-creator Naoto Oshima said Jackson recorded an a cappella demo tape for the game, but that Sega was unable to use the compositions due to various incidents. He added that Sega probably still had the demo tape. In a 2009 interview with French magazine Black and White, Buxer stated that Jackson had been involved with some Sonic 3 compositions, but chose to remain uncredited because he was unhappy with the sound capabilities of the Genesis. He also said that the Sonic 3 credits music became the basis for Jackson's 1996 single Stranger in Moscow. In 2013, fans discovered that the musical theme for Icecap Zone closely resembles a previously unreleased 1982 track, Hard Times, by the Jetsons, for which Buxer was the keyboardist and co-songwriter. An anonymous source involved in development told game trailers that Jackson's contributions remained, such as in the theme for Carnival Night Zone, and that Jackson had chosen to remain uncredited. In 2019, Gamer Evolution's Alex Donaldson noted that Sonic 3 had been re-released less frequently since Jackson's death in 2009, and speculated that this was due to legal problems with his estate. However, Sega staff including senior producer Mike Latham, marketing director Al Nilsson, Sonic 3 marketing director Pam Kelly, and Sega of America president Tom Kalinske stated that any involvement of Jackson was arranged without their knowledge, and that no contracts nor formal agreements were were made. In 2013, Hector stated that any similarities to Jackson's music in Sonic 3 were unintentional. Journalist Ken Horowitz raised questions about Jackson's alleged involvement, such as how an agreement between Sega and Jackson could have been kept secret from the media, why Sega's marketing never mentioned Jackson's involvement, and why Jackson would reuse music originally composed for a video game. Topic release Sonic 3 was released in North America on February 2, 1994, in Europe on February 24, and in Japan on May 27. To promote the European release, the British band Right Said Fred adapted their song, Wonderman, to include references to Sonic. The song was used in the game's advertisements and was also released as a single, which charted in the UK at number 55. A single cartridge version of Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Limited Edition, was cancelled. A prototype ROM image of this version was leaked in 2008. The game is included in the compilation Sonic Jam 1997 for the Sega Saturn, Sonic and & Knuckles Collection 1997 and Sonic and & Garfield Pack 1999 for Windows, Sonic Mega Collection 2002 for the GameCube, Sonic Mega Collection Plus 2004 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Windows, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection 2009 for the Xbox 3 360 and PlayStation 3, and Sonic Classic Collection 2010 for the Nintendo DS. Most compilations feature the game largely unchanged. However, Sonic Jam introduces remix options, normal mode alters the layout of rings and hazards, and easy mode removes certain acts from the game entirely. Sonic and Knuckles Collection features a MIDI rendition of the game's soundtrack, with certain levels featuring completely different music. Sonic 3 will not be included in the Sega Genesis Mini 2019, a dedicated console containing 40 Genesis games.
80 Games, which was briefly involved with the product's development, said the exclusion was due to licensing problems with the soundtrack. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was released for the Wii Virtual Console in September 2007 and Xbox Live Arcade on June 10, 2009. The Xbox version was developed by Backbone Entertainment and has enhanced graphics for high definition, online leaderboards, support for multiplayer via split screen and Xbox Live, and a new saving system that allows progress to be saved anywhere during play. A PC version was released via Steam in January 2011, as Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Topic reception The Genesis version of the game sold 1.02 million copies in the United States. While Sonic 1's worldwide sales have been estimated at 15 million and Sonic 2's at 6 million, Sonic 3, unlike these two, was not bundled with the Genesis console itself. However, Sonic 3 is still one of the best-selling Genesis games, like its predecessors, Sonic 3 received critical acclaim. It holds a score of 89% at review aggregator game rankings based on five reviews. Critics generally felt Sonic 3 was the best game in the series so far. Andrew Humphreys of Hyper, who declared himself not a Sonic fan, said it was undoubtedly the best of the series, including the acclaimed but obscure Sonic CD, though he admitted having preferred Sonic 2's special stages by a small margin. Sega Magazine, however, stated that Sonic 3 has better special stages and was not only superior to Sonic 2 as a whole but would be a serious contender for the Best Platform Game Ever Award. Sega Power wrote that despite their skepticism, they found it excellent and easily the most explorable and playable in the series. Electronic Gaming Monthly also compared Sonic 3 favorably to Sonic 1, 2, and CD and awarded it their Game of the Month award. They later ranked it number one in the EGM Hot 50, indicating that it received the highest average score of any game they had reviewed in the past year. Lucas M. Thomas of IGN stated that Sonic 3 completed the trilogy as the best of them all. Dan Whitehead of Eurogamer, however, considered Sonic and Knuckles superior. Lionel Vilner of Generation 4 believed Sonic 3 offered more challenge than its predecessors. The unknown gamer of GamePro proclaimed that the game proves that you can teach an old hedgehog new and exciting tricks. Take that old Sonic magic, add fun new variations, and you have another spectacular game. Some critics felt that Sonic 3 had innovated too little from previous Sonic games. Humphreys of Hyper saw only a few new features while Sega Power thought it was not all that different and Nintendo Life writer Damian McFerrin said that there's not a lot of new elements here to be brutally frank. While Denise Ahmed of Computer and Video Games agreed that the game was more of the same, he was placated by the game's girth of new and imaginative ideas. Frank Provo of GameSpot stated that the game's most significant addition was its save system. However, he and Electronic Gaming Monthly also both enjoyed the new power-ups. Many aspects of the game's level design were praised, Electronic Gaming Monthly and Sega Power enjoyed the game's expansive stages, secret areas, much less linear level design, and difficulty. Mean Machines agreed, describing the game as a roller coaster ride from start to finish and listing Carnival Night as their favorite level, which they described as probably the most slickly programmed portion of game in Mega Drive history. Humphreys and Mean Machines felt that the game was too short, but they and Sega Magazine felt that its two player mode and the emerald collecting would significantly extend the replay value. On the other hand, Whitehead said that the stage's large sizes would keep players sufficiently engrossed. Sega Magazine also enjoyed having the ability to play as Knuckles in the two-player mode. The unknown gamer felt that while the two-player mode was less fun than the main game, it was much improved over that of its predecessor due to the change of format from split-screen to full-screen, the visuals were very well received. Humphreys described Sonic 3 as one of the most beautiful games around and full of flashy new visual tricks, highlighting Sonic's ascension up pipes and spiraling pathways as particularly inventive. Sega Magazine exclaimed that its graphics were brilliant even for a Sonic game, while Provo praised the elaborate backgrounds. Mean Machines thought similarly, giving special praise to the camera's quick scrolling, the diversity of the level themes, and the chunkier, more detailed overall aesthetic. 
Rick Skews of Computer and Video Games stated that the graphics were stunning, attention to detail is breathtaking. Ahmed of the same publication also noted that the graphics were more detailed than those of previous installments. The Unknown Gamer described the game's settings as having gorgeous background detail and lots of visual treats and was impressed by the new obstacles that Sonic can traverse at top speeds. Thomas and Provo especially enjoyed the use of wordless cutscenes to create a coherent story and thematically connect the zones. McFerrin, however, felt that the visuals had been downgraded, particularly Sonic's dumpier sprite and the infamous dotty textures. The sound effects and music were also well received, though somewhat less so than the visuals. Sega Magazine described them as brilliant and far superior to Sonic 2's. Mean Machines stated that every level had great tunes and sound effects and particularly praised the game's ending music. However, Humphreys described the sound as sonicky, with the emphasis on the icky, he also found it strikingly similar to the first two Sonic game soundtracks. The Unknown Gamer also saw musical similarity to previous installments, and described the individual tracks as catchy, until you've heard it a hundred times. Thomas thought the music was impressive, but not quite on par with Sonic 2's. Reviews of the game's ports have been slightly less positive. The Xbox 360 release has scores of 78% and 79% at Game Rankings and Metacritic, respectively. Some critics, such as Adam Gigino of PALGN, felt the game had been insufficiently upgraded for its re-releases, Whitehead of Eurogamer wished online co-op had been implemented. Provo of GameSpot and Thomas of IGN wished Sega had re-released the game and its successor together as Sonic 3 and Knuckles instead, Mega ranked it the fifth best Genesis game ever in November 1994. In 2014, GamesRadar ranked Sonic 3 and Knuckles as the seventh best Genesis game. In 2013, Jeremy Parrish of US Gamer ranked it eighth. Topic: Legacy. The game served as the first appearance of Knuckles the Echidna, who would be featured prominently in future Sonic games. Issues 33 and 34 of Sonic the Comic and Issue 13 of the Archie Sonic the Hedgehog comic consisted of their own comic adaptations of the game. For Sonic's 20th anniversary, Sega released Sonic Generations, a game that remade aspects of various past games from the franchise. The Nintendo 3DS version of the game features a remake of the game's final boss, Big Arms. Additionally, a rearranged version of the Game Over theme appeared in the game. A reimagined version of the Hydro City stage, along with the Blue Sphere bonus stage, and a glimpse of Angel Island just before Green Hill begins appears in the 2017 game Sonic Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>